let God angry. You are ever piling up in them in your spiritual realm. How can you move on? You realize you are stagnant in one area. You think you are a witch. You think you are a sorcerer. You think you are a cast. But it's the wrath of God which are, 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 are a stumbling block to you because until you move them, you don't have the capacity to move on. You can read uh, the story in, 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 in Numbers chapter number 14. But I'd like to jump all the way to, to number 16 and uh, verse 46. Uh, verse 46. The Bible says, Then Moses said to Aaron, Take your censer and put incense in it, along with the fire from the altar, and hurry to the assembly to make atonement for them. Pray Jesus Christ to make atonement for them. Why? Look at it. Love has come out from the Lord. The Prague has started. Love has come out from the Lord. The Prague has started. How do you get to see that? So Aaron did as Moses said and learned in the midst of the assembly. The Prague had already started among the people, but Aaron offered the incense and made atonement for them. He stood between the living and the dead, and the prog stopped. But 14,700 people died from the prog in addition to those who had died because of Korah. Uh, then Aaron returned to Moses. In that, uh, to Moses at the entrance of the tent of the meeting, for the prog had stopped. Understand? What did they do that made the prog come upon these people? Because it is a stage, eh? As you could say, it was stage managed. It is stage uh, uh, managed because it is from one phase to another. Number one, and one of the things that makes God angry, we can see from chapter number sixteen. Eh? Number one is when you divide the church. Whenever you have, if you have ever divided the church anywhere, you made a church to have some groupings. Hmm? Da Korah, Dathan, Abraham, and Oni, they, 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 they incited the people against Moses and Aaron, and they formed a group, and they said that they want to go back to Egypt. If you have ever divided the church anywhere, or if you have ever divided the people anywhere, you made the people together, they were one unit, and then you put a wedge in between them that they they turned against each other the love of god is upon you and this one is dangerous because the other opens other opens for you then consuming fire consuming fire and we've seen about the proc and that number two the, there were those 250 men who were offering the incense in contrary to the instruction of priesthood it was for Aaron and his sons to present incense when they went to present before the Lord fire came from the Lord and it consumed all them 250 what I tell you that if you have ever taken responsibilities that are not yours if you have ever taken responsibilities that are not number one, if you have ever divided people, number two, if you have ever, if you have ever uh, taken responsibilities that are not yours, there is someone who legally has been instituted to do that work. The love of God is on you because uh, these people they knew very well. That the law of praise to the state, Aaron and his sons, are the one who to present the incense before the Lord for God to accept it. But they contradicted that and they took incense and God struck them by his anger. And 250 people were consumed by fire. Number three, if you have ever complained against a servant of God, hallelujah, for any actions he has taken. <laughs> the man of God may not do anything, but the prags comes upon you. No prags are destructive. Well, because number one, Korah and his team they were swallowed up by the earth. Why? Because of forming a a sprinting group to go back to Egypt. The earth opened up and swallowed them up alive. They went straight to the grave alive. 
Number two, when the two hundred fifty Levites uh, contradicted the law of the priesthood, uh, they were burned by consuming fire. Number three, when they complained against Moses that Moses uh, has killed their people, the wrath of God, it is in verse 41. The next day, the whole Israelite community grabbed against Moses and Aaron. You have killed the Lord's people. They said, You get me? But if you have ever complained or grabbed, hmm, contradicted the servant of God, maybe somebody was expelled from the church, and you are there questioning, grabbing, and contradict that, that you are threatened the love of God. And I want you to understand here when you form a sprinter group. Whatever comes on you, whatever the anger of God brings to you, is the earth opens and swallows you up alive. These are the people who are walking dead. You try to do anything, nothing is happening. Why? Well, because your your grace was swallowed up by the earth. Number two, if you have ever taken responsibilities that are not yours, you made yourself pastor when there was already a pastor in the place. What happens is that you are walking the consuming fire of God. If you have ever complained against a servant of God in any form or in any manner, you are walking with the pride of God. Today, these things are happening physically. Today, they happen spiritually. That is why they are more difficult to deal with. Because they are spiritual, you don't see them with your eyes. But even in the olden days before Jesus Christ came, they would happen physically. You get that? The pride of you. But now we have the spiritual pride. Imagine your soul is pranked. Who can employ you? That is why we, we see the things that we see. Numbers 25. Uh, while Israel was one, was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality to the mobile women. Did you hear that? So sexual immorality is a very sensitive area because that one automatically makes God angry. Mm -hmm. Who invited them to the sacrifice to their gods? Number two is sacrifices done not to God. I want you to do to not understand that. Sacrifices not done to God. Any sacrifice that you have ever done, but it was not for the living God. Hallelujah. It was not for the one that created you, the one who gives you breath, the one who makes you live. If you have ever made a sacrifice, not to your God, but to to whatever you sacrifice to, you know, that one attracts the love of God, and you shall see it in time. The people ate and bowed down before these gods, uh -huh, bowing down to idol worship, to, to idols. So Israel joined in worshiping the bar of pure, and the Lord's anger burned against them. And the Lord's anger burned against them. If you can read that story, but then it says, but those who died in the Prague, number 24,000. What did God bring to these people when his, ang his, his, his anger uh, was uh, aroused? What he brought was a prog, eh? a, a dead day prog, and it killed 24,000 people. That's not a small number. Imagine that today in our Kenya, 24,000 people dies in a single day. 24,000. The government will resign. Hallelujah. The government will resign. It will become a standstill. But here the power killed 24,000 people. What have they done that made God angry? Because I told you, these things are spiritually automated. You do this, this happens by itself. God has left. That's what Moses told us. Huh? I give you life and death. Choose life that you may live. It is personal choice. That's why he told, he told them there's a tree of no good and evil, and there's a tree of life. Do not eat it that you may live. The day you eat it, the day you die. It was their choice even today. What were they done? They had committed sexual immorality with the mobile women. Number two, they had eaten food, they had sacrificed to idols, and they had eaten meat sacrifice to idols. Understand those three things. They are very important. Number four, they had bowed down to those idols. That is very key. And you know, we have a group of people in our times uh, who who bows down to a certain carving. You get me? The work, uh, the work of a, of a, of a, of a what? Of a goldsmith or a blacksmith. 
very well fashioned and very well carved. The Bible says, and they bowed it down to idols. What is an idol? An idol is a cast image carved very well by the works of hands. Understand that? Because God then said, do not worship anything or any image or any carving or any idol of any form in heaven on earth or even under the earth. God was categorical. So do not lie to yourself. And these are the people we are seeing. When the love of God comes upon them, it is too late in the day that there is no remedy. And we say, God gave, God has taken. No. Sometimes God has not taken. Sometimes we have taken ourselves. Praise Jesus Christ. Praise Jesus Christ. You can know, you can read the, the, the whole story and understand. So these things, let me tell you people of God, today even in a church, we are so much compromising. Mm -hmm. We are making sexual sin eh, as if it is a it is a lifestyle. It's something of it is something enjoyable and accommodative. But at the long end, we shall see God in His full anger. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen President Kenyatta angry? The way furiously he fumes. Now that is a president of Kenya. Put yourself in the shoes of God, the God you have never seen, the God with spirit. When he is angry, fuming at what you are doing here on earth, we need to be repenting light away right now. Uh -huh. Now, no, no, uh -huh. Deuteronomy 9, 7 to 8, and the Bible says, Remember this and never forget how you provoke the Lord your God to anger in the desert. So, you are able, many people provoke God when they are in the desert. Let us continue. From the day you left Egypt until you arrived here, you have been rebellious against the Lord. The other thing that makes God anger a pride on a believer or on a person, and these are believers, is rebellion. You have been rebellious to this end. At Horeb, you aroused the Lord's land so that he was angry enough to destroy you. Did you get that? He was angry enough to destroy you. They allowed his run. When I went up to the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant of the Lord had made with you. I stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights. I ate no bread and drank no water. The Lord gave me two stone tablets inscribed with the finger of God. On them were all the commandments of the Lord proclaimed to you on the mountain of the fire on the day of the assembly. But when the Moses was up there, they corrupted themselves by idols and God was angry enough to destroy them. Uh -huh. Deuteronomy 11, 16-17 The Bible says eh, Be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. He told this is another thing. Enticement. And you shall see it does enticement work? And remember, the Bible says in a, in the word in the book of First Chronicles 21 verse one that the Satan arose against Israel and enticed David against God. Enticement. You know that when you are when you accept the uh, demonic enticement against God, and you know you can know when you are being enticed against God. Job already talked about it. He said it was in a dream. He, he could feel his hair as a standing up. Mm -hmm being uh, being uh, 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 enticed against to God mm -hmm. verse 16 we are here we are in verse 16 verse 17 then the Lord's anger will burn against you and will shut the heavens <laughs> hey and he will shut the heavens so when God gets angry he shuts the heavens mm -hmm. so that it will not rain and the ground will yield no produce and it should perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. Perishing. God brings perishing because uh, he closes the ground. Understand that? And the ground will yield no produce. Eh? Ground yields no produce. Pray Jesus Christ. Have you ever gone to, to home country, to up country, and you see during like the times of uh, the times of farming? When the rain is good and you find farms are very green with every vegetation there and you realize there is a certain piece of land despite that family planting and manuring uh, the crops that has come up uh, are very weak very few scattered uh, and eventually there is no harvest that the ground cannot produce a crop that's a sign we are talking about the land of God because this is one of the major curses 
that cannot be broken by anybody apart from God. That is why when the early was speaking to his sons, he told them, if one sins against man, he can petition God and God can mediate. But if you sin against God, who can mediate for you? He says that these people are telling them, if you will be enticed and worship other gods, the Lord's anger will break uh, upon you. The Lord's God anger will burn against you and will shut the heavens. Number two, the girl will not produce anything. Number three, you will perish. So you can see that the Bible is taking us somewhere. Some of the things that can tell us, by the way, we need to stop here and, uh, and call ourselves to a number of conversation. Could we be in the Lord's anger? Praise Jesus Christ. Because this message I'm speaking to it, uh, God spoke to it to me three days ago. In a, actually, not in a dream. I heard a voice. And the whole night it repeated in my ears, quenching the Lord of God. Quenching the Lord of God. So we must then ask ourselves, have, have we made God angry? Is God angry with us? What did we do then? Because if you know what makes God angry, then you can go to conclude by the way, God is angry with me. But if you do not know what makes God angry, how then can you conclude that I made God angry? You cannot, and therefore, you will not look for remedies. Deuteronomy 29, 25, 29, Deuteronomy 29, verse 25 to verse 28, and the answer will be, mm -hmm. it is because these people abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the God of their fathers, the covenant he made with them when he brought them out of Egypt. They went off and worshipped other gods and he bowed down to them. God they did not know. God he had not given he had not given them. Therefore the Lord anger burned against this land, so that he brought on it all the curses written on this book. Uh -huh. In the furious anger and in a great wrath, the Lord uprooted them. The Lord uprooted them. Mm. The Lord uprooted them from their land and thrust them into another land as it is now. Praise Jesus Christ. Get this. Uh, the man of God was telling them uh, there are things that are going to happen. There are things that are going to happen upon them. And we can read them upon uh, from verse 22. As we finish, uh, he says, Your children who follow you in later generation and the foreigners who come from distant land to see the calamities that have fallen on the land and the diseases with which the Lord has inflicted it. The whole land will be a burning west of salt and sulfur. Did you hear that? Nothing planted, nothing sprouting, no vegetation growing on it. It will be like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in fierce anger. All the nations will ask, Why has the Lord done this? To this land, why this fierce burning anger? Career. What have they done? Huh? This Moses was speaking what will happen to them, and it did happen. And he said, uh, If you shall abandon the covenant, understand that one of the things that it makes God, uh, God fears and burn upon you is when you abandon his covenant. His original agreement with you. Any covenant of God, be it marriage covenant, be it calling, be it your, your proposals with God, your personal engagement with God, if you have abandoned God's covenant, the anger of God burns upon you. What happens when the God's anger burns upon you is that uh, the Lord brings curses on you. Number two, the Lord approves you. Number three, the Lord thrusts you into another place where you are illegitimate. And he says, if you can read verse 23, verse 22, he says that the Lord sends calamities, diseases. Yeah? The whole land become, will be a burning waste of salt. A burning waste of salt. And sulfur, nothing planted, nothing sprouting, no vegetation growing on it. And many people are this way. Are this way. This is a person being explained here. Yeah? 
This is a person being explained here. Praise Jesus Christ. This is a person who is in this nature. Uh, a person full of calamities and diseases. A person who is full of full of affliction. A person who is a burning waste of salt and sulfur. Loving. What, what do you mean by define? Eh? Burning. You become a burning waste of salt and sulfur. It is defined. It is defined as nothing planted, nothing sprouting, no vegetation growing on it. It will be like the destruction of Solomon and Gomorrah. So, burn, you become a burning waste of salt and silver, meaning nothing planted, nothing sprouting, no vegetation growing on it. When the love of God comes upon a person, these are some of the things that you can look at the person and say, before we start talking about the ABCD, can we uh, appease God? Because he says, one of the things that will happen to a person who God is angry with is that uh, they become a burning waste of salt and silver, which means uh, no, nothing planted, nothing sprouting, and uh, no vegetation growing on you very things and it is dangerous hallelujah he says uh, nothing planted sprouting and no vegetation growing these are the very simple things that you can look at a person and say this person is suffering from the Lord of God because these are the things that come upon a person not from another source but the specific coming from the Lord of God but when does this Lord of God become a person when you abandon the original covenant of God Hallelujah. because he says eh, verse 19 eh, when such a person hears the words of this or he invokes a blessing on himself and therefore thinks uh, I will be safe even though I persist in I persist in going my own way. Deuteronomy 29 verse 19. Even though I persist in going my own way, this will bring disaster on the watered land as well as the dry. The Lord will never be willing to forgive him. His land and zeal will burn against that man. All the curses written in this book will fall upon him. And the Lord will blot out his name from under heaven. That is dying. The Lord will single him out from all the tribes of Israel for disaster according to all the curses of the covenant written in this book of the Lord. So meaning if you make God angry, you are just calling doom for yourself. You can see how serious it is. But what have they done? What was done? What, what was supposed to be done for this anger of God to come upon them? Abandon the covenant. When you, you can read it in Ezekiel 16 the whole of it, when you abandon the covenant of God, your original agreement with God, and you, you waver, you waver, because you have seen uh, some of the things uh, that have cropped up, and you call them civilization, or you are saying you are upgrading yourself, uh, and in that upgradation, uh, you nullify the concept of God, God says that you have abandoned his covenant. And if you abandon his covenant, he will be angry with you. And when he gets angry with you, he says, this is what I will do to you. I will turn you into a burning waste of salt and sulfur. Nothing planted, nothing sprouting, nothing, no vegetation growing in your life at all. At all. You will become just a waste. Mm -hmm. Joshua, our time is far much. Uh, ending Joshua 7 1. Let us read Joshua 22 verse 20. Joshua 22 verse 20. The book says, uh, verse 20. The book says, uh, uh -huh. Joshua 22 verse 20. When a kind son of Zerah acted unfaithfully, you can hear, acted unfaithfully regarding the devoted things, did he not love come upon the whole community of Israel? He was not the only one who died for his sin. He was not the only one who died for his sin. Understand here this concept. Eh? The keyword that was being highlighted by these people when they came thinking that uh, they have trouble Manasseh or uh, the, 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 the people who were from the eastern tribe uh, 
uh, who, who were the received the inheritance from Moses when they were still on the eastern side of the Jordan. When they returned, they went and formed the, another altar, and they said it is a monument of uh, of memory and remembrance of that. When they got, when they were approached by the the other community of Israel to question about this, they told them, "If you do this, we are provoking God to anger, as Achan did." And they said that when when Achan acted unfaithfully, so when you act unfaithfully, the Lord's anger burns. What did the Achan do that was called acting unfaithfully? When he kept devoted things, Joshua seven verse one. But the Israelites acted and faith free in regard to their devoted things. A can son of Kami, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord the anger burned against Israel. What happens from here? I'd like to read something here that I'd like to bring here. Uh, uh, I'd like you to get it. A can acted and faith free. What did he do that was called by God acting the free? He took devoted things and he kept them for himself. You know what they had taken? Uh, a Babylonian a garment, some some 100 or so silvers and a, and a gold bar and a bar of gold. This God called it uh, acting and free. Why? They are acting and free. Why? They were devoted things. Hallelujah. If you are this kind of a person that keeps to yourself devoted things, devoted things means things that belong to God. Holy items. Many, many take care of He took the holy goblets of the temple and they drank with them his, with his concubines and his officials and all that. And God told him, I am done with you. When Akan did this, uh, the, those people told them, the word been said by Joshua, that when Akan acted unfaithfully, the Lord under banned against him and he died together with his family. So, meaning, when we act unfaithfully by keeping devoted things to ourselves, tithes, offerings, Mm, a seed, first fruits, that's givings, uh, what else? Vows, you are your covenant sacrifices, you are all of the sacrifices, you are your partnership, you get me? That's what we call a temple tax. When you keep them to yourself and you refuse to release them, hallelujah, to what God has said, it makes God angry with you. What does that mean? What happened when they did this? Their enemies defeated them. The people of Ai defeated the army of Joshua. That is what I wanted to bring home. That when you, when the Lord's anger is on you, if you want to know the Lord's anger is on you, your enemies defeat you easily. Hallelujah. We had talked about the death. What happened with the with the Akan? He was stoned, and they burned him with the fire, consuming fire. So these are the things that you attract because you must understand when God is angry at you, what comes from God to you? When God is happy, we say, let your face shine upon us. So when the face of God is shining upon you, what can get released? What about when the face of God is furious towards you? There must be something that comes from him. But you must also know what then makes the face of God change from shining to furiousness. And this is what we are running. We are running together, hand in hand, what makes God angry and what happens when God is angry. I will, sum, I will summarize up uh, <coughs> and tell you these are these together, these are the things that you can say, these are the things that you say that God is angry at me. But these are the things uh, that you do to make God angry. When you keep holy things, devoted things to yourself, those things, uh, they don't belong to you people. They belong to God. It's only that uh, he has elevated some people that we call a servant of God to take them on his behalf. They are called the priests and the rabbis. And we are the one today, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and even evangelists, the five officers of Jesus Christ. So you must understand that uh, we are not doing this. Uh, we are not... Uh, 
uh, many people say that uh, we are we are doing business with the work of God. No, even me, I would love to be in office. By the way, myself, I wanted to become a, a political career person. Mm? I was I was fashioning myself very well to become a politician around the way. But when God inter interfered with my life and told me, I would like you to serve me, I had no other option because God is mightier than I. So I shared my interest and now I am doing the work of God. So you can see, I would love to be doing business. I would love to be doing whatever other people are doing. But because of the spiritual limitations that have been put there by God, you know, because callings are different. I always tell you, we have very many people who are called. I told you that those who are called by God originally, there are those who have been who have called themselves. Eh? They feel they want to serve God. There are those who have been called by people. Uh, people look at you and they say, "You can make a good pastor." And there are those who are are made to be pastors. Eh? You go to a school and you are trained how to become a pastor. There are those also who have what we call a generational calling. Yeah, it is it is a generational thing, so it is automatic. It runs through the blood, and there are those who are called by Satan himself. So you must be able to differentiate callings, so that you don't judge us in one basket. Pray Jesus Christ. Let me teach you something else that happens when God is angry. Second uh, Kings, Second uh, Kings twenty two. Second Kings chapter number twenty two, and verse thirteen. Let us read. Second Kings 22 verse 13. <laughs> the Bible says it. That's that, that thing, verse 13. Go and inquire and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger. Look here. Great is the Lord's anger that he burns against us because our fathers have not obeyed the word of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all it is written there concerning us. So another thing that it makes God anger burn upon people is parental negligence. When our parents neglect responsibility of God, parental or parentage negligence can make God anger burn against children. Verse 17. Because they have forsaken me, and burn incest reason here because they have number one we have seen a parental negligence makes God angry number two because they have forsaken me forsaking God uh -huh, and burned incest to other gods and provoked me to anger by all the idols their hands have made my anger will burn against his place and will not be, and will not be quenched yeah now the way I got this verse quenching the love of God. He says, and my love will not be quenched. Why? Because their parents abandoned the responsibility of God. They, they do not obey. Number two, he never says, forsaking God, that's the same thing, but he says, burning incense to other gods. Burning incense to other gods. That. When the things of God, you give them to other gods. God says, I share my glory with no one. I will give my praises to no other. Put the incense, incense is a symbol of praise and worship. When it is misdirected, when praise and worship is misdirected, when the honor of God is misdirected, the Lord says the Lord and the bands and conchabri. Verse 26 concerning the same. Uh, where are we? Mm, 17. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus Christ. Uh, 23. Uh, 2 Kings 23, verse 26. Nevertheless, the Lord did not turn away from the heat of his fierce anger, which he burned against Judah because of all Manasseh had done to provoke him to anger. So you understand there are things that he provokes God to anger. So you come and you ask yourself, what had Manasseh done? So the Lord said, I will remove Judah also 
from my presence as I removed Israel and I reject Jerusalem the city I chose and this temple about which I said there shall my name be what do you call that when God got angry with Judah and Jerusalem what did he do he expelled them expulsion expulsion yeah? you get expelled by God so they went to exile Hallelujah. what but the Bible says eh, uh, Josiah did so many things to renew the covenant he did so many things but he says those all things that he did were not sufficient enough to quench the love of God so we need to go and then investigate what had Manasseh done that was so serious that uh, no matter what Josiah did was not able to quench the love of God and he said because of what Manasseh did he expelled them let us go back and see in verse 21 chapter number 21 second Kings 21 what had Manasseh done verse 2 he did evil in the eyes of the Lord following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israel he rebuilt the high places his father is a king and he destroyed. He also erected altars to Baal and made an Asherah poor as Abu king of Israel had done. He bowed down to all the star hosts and worshipped them. He built altars in the, in the temple of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem I will put my name. In both courts of the temple of the Lord, he built altars to all the star hosts. He sacrificed his old son in the fire, practiced sorcery and divination, and consulted the mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, provoking him to anger. He took the cup the Asherah pole he had made and put it in the temple, of which the Lord had said to David and to his son Solomon, In this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not again make the feet of Israel wander and all that. So you see, verse 10, the Lord said it through his servant, the prophet, Manasseh, king of Judah, has committed these detestable sins. He has done more evil than the Amorites, who preceded him and has led Judah into sin with his idols. Therefore, this word, the Lord, the God of Israel says, I am going to bring such disaster on Jerusalem and Judah, that the ears of Aaron, who hears of it through Tingo, I will stretch out over Jerusalem, the measuring line used against Samaria and the pub line used against the house of Ahab. I will wipe out Jerusalem as one wipes out a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance and hand them over to their enemies. They will be rooted and plundered by all their force because they have done evil in my eyes and have provoked me to anger from the day their forefathers came out of Egypt until this day. So you can hear. Moreover, Manasseh also shed so much innocent blood that he filled Jerusalem from head to head beside the sin that he had caused Judah to commit so that they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So you can hear the sins of Manasseh. They are grievous. They are serious. Shedding innocent blood and all those other sins we have listed down there doing parallel worship of God God became angry and he was not willing to forgive them. And that made the wrath of God unconscionable. Second Chronicles chapter number 19 verse 2. I think because of our timer, we will close there. Second Chronicles chapter number 19 verse 2. Jehu the seer, son of Hanani, went out to meet him and he said to the king, Should you have the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Another thing that you make that makes God angry is when you help the wicked. Hey, when you help those who hate God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because of this, the Lord of God is upon you. The Lord of God is upon you. So when you help those who hate God, you know these people hate God and you help them. Uh, then the Lord's anger comes upon you. You need to balance very much. That's what Paul says eh, that we be doing good and especially to them that are of the house of God. To especially to those who are of the house of God. And I'll take you to read that story of Manasseh. Take time and analyze the sins of Manasseh and you shall see if the Lord of God is upon you or not. Because of our time, man, 
we may not be able to finish all these things eh? but there are some several verses i would not like us to cross without highlighting them second chronicles that the six verse 18 the bible says verse 18 mm -hmm. verse 18 uh, Verse 18 here. He carried to Babylon all the articles from the temple of God, both large and small, and the treasure of the Lord's temple, and the treasure of the kings and his officials. Second Chronicles 36 and verse 8. Let me read verse 8. The Bible says that the other event of Jehoiakim reign, the detestable things he did, and all that was found against him are written in the book of kings of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiakim uh, succeeded him. So every Time, uh, we shall find ourselves eh, doing detestable practices. Everything that is, you know, it is detestable. And he said, even the greed for food is detestable before God. Everything that is detestable attracts the love of God. So far, have I I, I, I know in the love of, in the love of God. Praise Jesus Christ. Are you in the love of God? Second Chronicles 29 verse 8. Therefore, the anger of the Lord has fallen on Judah and Jerusalem. He has made them an object of dread and horror and scorn. Understand that. When the anger of God comes upon a believer, you become an object of bread, horror, and scorn. Praise Jesus Christ. Yeah? as you can see with your own eyes who that uh, therefore the anger of the Lord has fallen on Judah and Jerusalem he has made them an object of bread and horror and scorn as you can see with your own eyes so when the anger of the Lord comes upon a person you become an object of, of bread people are afraid even associating with you you are just a a, a fear a fear a fear monger yeah? an object of horror, emptiness and it's called embarrassment, disgrace you become uh, one who trades fear number two, an empty person number three, a scornful person that is you are disgraceful what had they done? what had they done? it is written in verse 6 our fathers were unfaithful they did evil in the eyes of the Lord our God and forsook him. So I told you the negligence of our parents. The negligence. That's what I said. Parentage negligence is very serious. Do, uh, they turned their faces away from the Lord's dwelling place and they turned their backs on him. They also shut the doors of the portico and put out the rams. They did not burn incense or present any burnt offering and the sanctuary to the God of Israel. How many things? Number one, when you turn your back against God. Number two, they have said that when you shut, when you put out the realms of God, you no longer pray. Mm -hmm. uh, you no longer prophesy. They burn incense. When you, rog you no longer pray. When you put out the lamps, you no longer pray. When you when you no longer burn incense, when you no longer worship and praise God. Number three, and and or present any burnt offering. When you no longer offer offerings, three things. Put out uh, uh, what is it? Put out the lamps and no longer burn incense. Number three, uh, pre, no longer present burnt offerings. Uh, okay. What is this? Lamps stands for prayers. Uh, 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 incense stands for praise and worship and burnt offering stands for your sacrifice and your offerings when you stop doing three, these three things the anger of God comes upon you and what happens when the anger of the Lord comes upon you is that uh, you become an object of bread, horror and scorn may God bless you as you reconcile yourself to God pray Jesus Christ because categorically, I would like to say it to you in this way. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing, last thing, that makes God's anger burn against a person. That's, this one is very important because people are doing this in hurry. Second Samuel 6, verse 6 to 7. When they came to the threshing floor of Nakon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the action stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irrelevant act. 
Therefore God struck him down and he died there beside the ark. And death comes instantly. That was called uh, instant death. What is what is the sin? When you pray around with the ark of covenant. Simply stating it uh, when you pray around with the servants of God. You see the man of God has stumbled and you pray and you go to pray around with him when he has stumbled. The man of God is the ark of covenant. Today, the ark of covenant is separated by the man of God. When he stumbles, for everyone stumbles, it is not your duty to go and act. The Bible has said, and act irrelevantly. Do not act irrelevantly in the presence of a servant of God. That makes God angry. When the man of God don't act irrelevantly. That one we can discuss it later. How do you become how do you act irrelevantly? He went to support the the, 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 the cat thinking that he was giving a support. That made God God's anger burn against him and he struck him dead. Pray Jesus Christ acting irrelevantly when the man of God stumbles. Acting irrelevantly when the man of God stumbles. These people who pretend to be helping the servants of God, but they know what they are after. That's what I said. Pray Jesus Christ. So let me, uh, and told you, uh, to, 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 towards the end, uh, I will highlight these points and tell you these are the things uh, that you can look upon a person and say, Maybe the love of God is upon this person because we've taken so much time to describe uh, the things that makes God angry. What when God is angry at a person? What reaches that person? Number one, distress, trouble, destruction, death of sword, accidents that you cannot explain, disaster, severe plagues, diseases that are incurable, uh, are opens and swallows you up. Uh -huh. uh, consuming fire, something else comes you know, that uh, is something else. Also, that the crossed heaven is a sign that the God is angry with you. Crossed heaven, perishing when you find you are ever perishing, and uh, something else that ground use no produce for you, meaning you are hand work and doesn't bring dividends. Something else are a curses of any kind, especially covenantal curses covenantal curses the curses that are written in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 28 those curses something else is uh, when you find you are uprooted uprooted you are, you are employed but uh, you get the sack and you cannot be able to defend it yeah, you are any hour sack even if you are in marriage divorce keeps on happening in a man that you cannot tell you are you, you are a chest in eh? you are uprooted eh? thrusting you are thrown here and there carelessly recklessly without any consideration i have seen a certain lady experiencing this thrusting eh? thrusting even you are a chest out of your chamber you are a chest and nobody supports you and you say that is an injustice you can read it determine 29 23 22 23 another thing is that you become a, a a burning waste of salt and sulfur which i say that nothing is planted in you even if the servant of god pray to you nothing gets planted in you nothing sprouts in you no vegetation grows in your life there is no growth of any kind in your life you are just there sad a burning sulfur, uh -huh. something else that the enemies defeats you, something else that uh, expulsion, you are expelled. Have you ever been expelled from a church? Have you ever been expelled? For, have you ever been banished from any congregation, from any association that you have been expelled? You get any expulsion of any kind, either by a letter or by words or by invoking the authority of the mother. Any expulsion mm, is a sign that you are you, you, you the Lord of God is working on you. Any captivity, do you dream when you are when you are when you are tied somewhere? Captivity, something is that you become an object of bread, horror, and scorn that the people are afraid of you. 
people are afraid of you not because of your magnanimity but because eh, of, of, of your nature of the way you look you look pathetic eh? horror you are empty and scorn disgrace humiliation follows you something else at uh, instant death your beings dies and dies very quickly these are some of the things with very many more that you can go and highlight uh, and you'll be able to see indeed the love of god is disastrous is it serious because somebody was undergoing through these things uh, i don't see how this person can uh, can prosper in any way even a message told them you will be yearning for the morning when the morning comes you will be yearning for the evening because of how painful it is Praise Jesus Christ. Is the love of God upon you? Find me in the next episode as I teach you the ways of quenching the love of God. It is quenchable. God cannot be angry forever. Even if he wants, he cannot be angry forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may God bless you and may God console you in Jesus' name. Amen.